Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard, our Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at Jay Wonder on the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And today we are going to be working on our Pikmin like game. And we were almost going to have background music today, but it didn't happen. It didn't come together. So, no. So instead, Joey's just going to hum quietly, but nothing mm -hmm. copyrighted. He's just going to be free improvising. Mm -hmm for the entirety of the stream. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is copyrighted for sure. <laughs> um, anyway, let's switch to coding. All right, so um, if you uh, haven't been following stream for the past few, uh, we've been working on a Pikmin-like game um, called Bug President, all caps. And um, so we have this little guy who can move around. You can see we've got our little aiming thing. And um, what we're, where we're at so far is you can throw um, these bugs, at things and then they will carry them back we'll drop it in the hole and then they jump up and down because they're happy that's mm -hmm. that's where we're at um so since we've got that kind of going i think the next thing to do is like so these guys you know have made it back but we have no way to reclaim your bugs right now so i think that's the next thing we do that and we also need to start displaying like how many bugs do we have and all of that you know so let's Makes use that. Sense. And the plan for reclaiming it is if you played Pikmin before, we're doing the same kind of thing. So you're going to press B, and then there will be a big circle that's going to appear around where that cross is. I don't know why I'm pointing around the cross here on the um, the game. Um, so there'll be a circle around there, and any, any of the bugs that are in that circle will just get like, um, they'll run back to you. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, let's do that right now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, add in on B button pressed. And um, the way I think this is going to work is, so the way it works in Pikmin, and we might copy it here, but it might just be too complicated, um, is when you press B, it expands out from the center. Um, and if you release B, then it cancels it. Um, but it also only lasts for a certain amount of time. So you can only hold it for like a second or two and then just cancels. Um, so I don't know how important it is that we mimic all of that behavior. Um, but I do like the getting larger. And the reason why is because um, if you have like a group of bugs, you only want to get some of them. It's very useful because you can just, you know, put it there and then press B and just immediately release it and just get the few that happen to be wherever, you know, like right next to the <laughs> whole thing. All right, sorry, I got to break up a cat fight. Just a second. Oh. My cat. So. Sitting on my desk in the yeah. keyboard. Are you, are you intending to taunt him a little bit? Thomas, just like with your well-behaved cat. <laughs> I'm just making sure that the viewers are entertained. Say hi to Otto, everybody. Here. Hello, Otto. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Oh, my. <laughs> Got me in the eye. Oh. Good cat. Good cat. Knows what weak spots are. Yeah. He um uh when he when he gets a little too aggressive, I pick him up and put him on top of the cat tree. And I don't know why it, that works, but it just kind of chills him out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So he's like, "I'm the king of the castle now. Nobody can mess like, with me." He does not like being picked up, for the record. Um, mm -hmm. so you have to be really careful about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you should always be careful when picking up animals. About my uh my dad when when we just got my Westie I had when I was younger. Uh, the little guy is only like this big, but he like reared up and my dad was like right on next to the ground on him and he slapped, he got a little just on the eye and it was just like, uh, you know, scratched his eye a little. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. Um, Lucas says in chat, you y'all should make a Pikmin game. I don't know if that's what do you to think a we're, joke. Yeah. yeah. But, what do you uh, think we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> we're making a Pikmin game. We've got like so many here, times. Lucas. Come on. <laughs> All right. So 
on be button pressed, we are going to start um, uh, like calling the bugs. So we're going to make a variable. It's going to be called um, calling bugs. Um, and we're going to make a, another one that is um, uh, calling bugs start time. So when B button is pressed, we're going to go ahead and set calling bugs start time to be whatever the current time is. Time since start. And we're going to set calling bugs to true. All right, I'm just. There we go. Like that. And now, um, when B button is released, we're going to set calling bugs to be false. All right. So before we actually end up calling them, let's draw this thing to the screen. So to draw it, we are going to be using the um, render on Z index block from Sprite Utils. Oh um, yeah, I just noticed scaling goes in between. I thought I put it at like 99.5. Well, let me check. Okay. All right. So we will set this to be 50. I don't know. And we're going to have an if statement right here that's um, if calling bugs. And if we are, then also from Sprite Utils, we're going to grab the draw circle right here in screen. And we want to draw this at the cursor location. So I think we have, do we have a cursor sprite, I want to say? We do. Great. Um, so we're, we're just going to use that cursor sprites position to get where our center should be. So go ahead, do cursor X, cursor Y. OK, I did only put it at 99. I guess I needed to put it at 99.5. Oof. Apparently. Um, and there we go. So. OK, but like I said, we want it to expand out from the center when we draw it. Um, and we're probably also not going to make it orange. Um, so to make that happen, um, we are going to do um, we're going to use that time start that we did, the start time. And um, we'll figure out how long it's been since the start time. And then, I don't know, just convert that somehow into like what the radius should be at this point. So um, let's go ahead. I think I already have a temp number variable. I do. Great. Um, so let me zoom out. We're going to set our temp number variable to be uh, the current time minus uh, our start time. And um, let's go ahead and I, I know we're going to want to make variables for this. So we're going to make two variables here. One of them is going to be um let's see time to uh, i should prefix these so we're going to do like call time to max radius and we're going to do call and um what's the other one i want to do um max radius And for now, we'll set this to be 20. I don't know. And time to max radius, we will set to be 500 milliseconds. OK, OK, OK. So with that, um, head back over to here. We're going to um, first, we'll just check, are we above the max time to the radius? And if we are, then we're just going to draw it with whatever the full radius is. So let's grab that max radius. I prefixed it in everything, and I still couldn't find it. Um, so if our temp number is greater than whatever our time to max radius is, 
Then we're just going to draw with the full radius like that. Else, we're going to draw and uh, we're going to be doing the um, radius times um, temp number divided by whatever our uh, call time to max radius is. And that'll give us a percentage. So we multiply that by the radius, give us whatever our radius should be. Uh, right, and then I need times. Max radius. Okay. okay. Let's try it. Yeah, that's working. I kind of wish it was a little more animated. You what know? if it was? What if there was like a, like a haze, or like you filled in the circle a little bit? Oh, we can't really do transparency though. Never mind. That's a bad idea. No, we could use shader for that, but um, that will be. Did, that would be a lot of work. But we did just release the update to support shaders, so that could. Be yeah, helpful. I can't do that. That's going to take too long. Oh uh, yeah, um, wait. <laughs> Not not on stream at least. Yeah. Also, I think I need to add more methods to that. I'll do it later though. Mm -hmm. Um, I also want to do a shade circle and uh, shade rectangle, you know, and I guess maybe shade triangle. Yeah. Uh, what we're I talking know. about is if you saw that you got an update last week. I mean, we just added some cool fun things, but they're not really exposed yet, so you see nothing yet. Yeah. Um. OK, so um, what we could do, so the way that um, Pikmin does it is uh, I think the circle is like a dotted line and they like kind of circle around a little bit. Um, but the problem is that our bugs are a dotted line, I mean, our dots. So I don't know if that would actually look good. I kind of wish we could just take a circle and make it dashed. But I think the code for that is going to be needlessly complicated. You know, like if we wanted to do that, the way I would do that is I would um, draw it onto an image first. Mm -hmm. I would draw the circle and then I would just draw rays outwards basically to. Yeah, like spokes. That's how I was yeah. thinking of it. Yeah, OK. Um, but that's going to be a lot of code for not that much payoff, I think. Um, there won't be much payoff. I don't know if it'd be that bad. I don't know. Hey, Joey, do you want a side adventure? My computer is killing me today. No. Oh, OK. Uh, it well, is it is surviving for the moment. <laughs> I was going to I was going to ask Joey to make a little extension for me, but. Oh, well, I mean, you can tell me to make an extension. I just won't do it on stream. No, no, no. It needs to have it on stream. That's the fun. Oh. Thomas. Oh. Thomas adventure. I'm not taking Thomas four on, weeks when Thomas I figured out how to do it. <laughs> um, all right. Well, anyway, this is fine for now. Um, so let's go ahead and do the logic for uh, reclaiming these guys when we throw them out. Um, so we're just going to throw a bunch of these. And um, the way we're going to do this is kind of the same um, logic, but we're going to be doing it inside of an on game update. So we're going to go into on game update. There we go. And we're going to be using another block, which I don't think I've ever used before in Sprite Utils. Um, wait, it's in here, right? Get all sprites of kind blank within 50 pixels from. And uh, I. Yeah, we can do this from the cursor. It's happening, Joey. It's finally happening. Oh, I'm so happy. I don't even remember. Did I write this one or did someone else? You did. I'm, I didn't write it. And okay. I think it's only you and me who do that. I, I feel like maybe. Could this have been? Vivian? This was Vivian. Yeah, Vivian wrote oh, this. Oh, it might have been. I, okay. I'm looking at the killer right now. So, yeah, beautiful. And it must be. Um, 
All right, so we're just going to go ahead. Let me simplify this code. Um, I was like, it'll be easier to explain if I use an if statement, but really, I, I just need to use a mass. Um, I'm sorry, a min. Um, so a min of this and uh, the max radius, and then I don't need an if statement. There you go. All right. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and copy that and put this right here. And we want to have that same if calling bugs check. So do that. And um, uh, so what we're going to do is when we get all of these guys, yes, breakfast. Just me out of me. Um, we're going to take all these guys and we're going to make them run back. And um, I think what we're going to do is not pathfinding on this. So in Pikmin, they don't do pathfinding. Um, when you call them back, they just run towards you. And if there's something in the way, tough. You're going to have to go around and get them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, to make this happen, we're going to go ahead and do um, a follow. So let's do loops for of. Do you call sprites? Uh, what am I looking for? Follow. Value, follow. Bug president. OK, so we're just going to go ahead and toss a bunch of these and try it out. Come on, you guys. Ooh. All right, so they're coming back to me. That's nice. They're probably running a little bit too fast. Let's go ahead and make their speed less. Um, so I'm going to set their speed. You know what? We should probably just set this as a variable. Bug speed. Because I, I have a feeling we're going to have them be moving around to a bunch of different things in this game, so might as well be consistent. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll set this to be 50. I don't know. That might be too low, but we'll try it out. All right. Do that. Yeah, that, that feels about right. OK, so now when they come back to me, um, so they're still, the sprites are still around. They're just underneath bug president right now. Um, and we're going to instead destroy them. Um, and uh, we need to start having a counter that indicates like how many we have out of, you know, how many there are in the game total right now. <laughs> um, so let's do that. We'll start the HUD and then we'll do the destroying and counting. Um, so we're going to have two numbers. Do it down real quick. All right, we're going to have two numbers. They're going to be the um, uh, total number of bugs that we currently have and the number of bugs that we have with us. <laughs> um, so let's do total bugs. And um, following bugs, I guess. They won't actually be visible, but that's just the term we'll use. Uh, so to start off with, um, we're not going to do the full 100. Let's just do, hi, Brohan. Um, let's just do uh, 40. Should be fine um, for both. Now we're going to uh, actually draw this to the screen. And to do that, we are going to use fancy text. So um, let's create a text sprite. And we will call this bug count. You know what? Let's prefix this. HUD bug count. I, I have a feeling we're going to have other HUD stuff later. So Joey is drawing in the I'm, air. I'm, I'm making it work. 
Are you doing the extension for me? Yeah, but I'm making the namespace of it fine, so. OK. Um, all right, so um, we got this HUD bug count. We got this text. We want this to be locked to the bottom of our screen. And the way we're going to do that is by using a flag that we haven't actually used in a while, which is relative to camera. Turn that on. We're also going to turn on ghost for a good measure. And uh, let's ghost pick up. makes it. it. It is ghost already, but it's nice. To be I know it is. Um. OK, we're also going to go ahead and choose the um, font we're going to use for this. I think we're just going to use the rounded small font. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for the text, let's go ahead and make a function for updating this. So we're going to do a function, which is update count. And um, inside here, we're going to set the text of this guy. So let's go ahead and do that first. There we go. Grab a text join. I'm going to do a slash. And then put in our two numbers. Following bugs is first, total bugs is second. And um, then we're going to go ahead and move this guy. So it's relative to camera, so it's going to ignore the camera, which is good. But when we change the text, the size of the sprite might change. So we want to have it <clears throat> always in the bottom right of the screen. Mm -hmm. So we're going to set the um, bottom to be like screen height minus two. Should be fine. Grab that from scene. Do, do, do. Screen height is literally the one of the first two blocks. OK. Um, and then we'll do the same thing for the right. Set it to be the screen width minus two. All right, and go ahead and just call this function. Forty out of forty. Beautiful. Also glad that I actually put a slash in this font. I couldn't remember if I did or not. Um, all right, and actually, I think we can because there's no like. So the reason that this is, we said two pixels from the bottom. The reason this is not two pixels from the bottom is because um, there's some space for the letters that go below the baseline. But because we're using numbers, and none of the numbers go below the baseline. We can just go ahead and move these guys down a little bit. So we're, we're going to go ahead and just do instead of minus two, we'll just do screen height. There we go. All right. Um, cool. OK, and that actually looks pretty good. I was wondering if we should change the color, but I don't know. What do you think, Thomas? Should I change the color? I like it. All right. Leave it as is. And uh, let's just change this to be update HUD all up and we'll just we'll just put all of our HUD updating stuff in here. All right. Now let's go to our bug throwing code. So that's inside of our on a button pressed. And uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to see um, is our following bugs greater than zero. We need to make sure we got bugs to throw. And if it is, we're going to go ahead and throw. And we're going to change it by negative one and update our HUD. So see, change follow time. Following bugs, I mean, not follow time by negative one.
and uh, call that function that we got. Update HUD. All right. And so now, default. Now I can't throw anymore because I threw 40. Um, cool. All right. So now we need to be able to um, call them back in and actually have them go back towards our number. So once they get to us, we want to um, uh, destroy them and then add them back to our count. So I think the way we're going to do this is just by when they overlap with bug president. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to do an on overlap event. There we go. And bug president is just kind player. And these guys are kind bug. So when that happens, we're going to destroy them. And change following bugs by one. All right. And update HUD. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I, I don't think that's a quarter because I didn't actually get to that part in the game. Thomas saved me a quarter. I wasn't even watching, so I'm, I'm not going to call you on it. I don't care. <laughs> All right. I'm forever in your debt for 25 cents worth. I'll remember that. All right. Hey, cool. So I can Thank throw these guys all out and I can call them back, which is nice. All right. Can you uh, also so, just like run around and pick them up without pressing B now? Yep. It's kind of cool if you can. I don't think it's a bad thing. Curious. No, it is. And that's also how it works in um, like Pikmin is when you run into them, they just start following you. So nice. it's good behavior. Cool. All right. Um, OK, so we want to do um, one other thing, though. We want to make it so that when we are calling back right now, we are just calling the idle bugs. So the bugs that have either no task assigned to them or they have finished their task. We want to also be able to call the ones that are assigned to a task. So if we are, say, carrying a strawberry and we decide, oh, you know what? I actually need you guys to work on something else. Then we want to be able to call them back and um, have them come to us. So let's do that. Um, there's two things we're going to have to do for this. One is actually turn them back into bugs and have them follow us. That's easy. The other thing is if they are following a path, like they have already started being carried, we need to go ahead and cancel. We need to stop the path and um, well. So to do that, um, we're going to go ahead and go to our code that we just wrote, this if calling bugs. And uh, we're going to do the same thing for busy bug. Um, but these guys, we are going to go ahead and call unassigned bug, which I'm going to look at the, I don't remember exactly what this function does, so we're going to go ahead and look at it. Okay, so we're setting the task to that, setting ghost off, setting the kind of bug. Yeah, that seems like pretty much what we want. Um, the only thing that's missing here is we need to take that task and like actually stop it if it's. All right. So go ahead and call unassigned bug. Like that. And um, we need to go to our. See, we have this assigned to carry task, so let's look at this. Um, so the number display thing, that's fine. We can just leave that as is. And then um, we want the length of array greater than weight. Then they follow the path, and we set ghost to off. OK, so we're going to. Um, in here, grab this. Put this in here. And we're going to set our temp sprite. To be whatever the task is for this. Okay. 
And so if there is, um, we'll do this at the end here. So if there is a um, task, so I, I, you know, I don't know, there might be a, a thing where we make it so that there's a possibility that it's busy but doesn't have a task. So we'll just check the existence first. Um, then we're going to check to see if that task is underway. So we're going to say if the length of the array is less than whatever the weight is. Then we are going to set that task ghost off. And I think inside of C, I, I think that the A star thing has a cancel. Nope. Hey, Joey, how do I cancel following a path? Uh, pass and null. Or speed okay. zero. See if that works. You both. All right. This is angry. I don't think it likes me passing a null. Oh, well, then I guess passing zero. Okay. Interesting. What the heck? What is it saying? Can't just set the speed to zero. Argument of type number. Ugh. There we go. All right. Great. <laughs> um, OK, so we'll see if this works. Uh, we're going to go ahead and head over to um, the strawberry and throw enough that it starts moving. Seven, one more. And now we're going to call these guys back. And there we go. Stopped moving. That's good. Seems like it actually started stopped moving before I called them back, though. Did it because it ran into you, and so then you picked up the bugs? No, because they have a different kind, so they shouldn't be getting picked back up, you know? Maybe yeah. I did press B, and I just didn't give it enough time for it to actually show up. All right. That, and then call these guys over. Ooh, okay, we do have an issue here. So, um, the issue is that these bugs um, here, we'll try and watch this. Um, so I'm not going to call them back here. I'm just going to just watch them go. And you can see that I turn them into ghosts so that we don't run into trouble with them um, interacting with the tile map while they're moving around. And that means that they can actually be inside of the tile map when that is like happening, um, when, when we end up canceling the task. So in order to prevent that from happening, um, we're going to, inside of this unassigned bug thing, we're going to say, uh, we'll just do a check. Say, side of scene. Uh, I want the tile at location as wall. And then I want the location, tile map location of our sprite and because our sprites are one by one, we shouldn't have a problem with using two this. Two, aren't they? Oh, they are two by two, aren't they? Um, what would happen if they weren't ghosts to begin with? Would they just kind of would they still follow the strawberry but get like shoved by the wall and then continue on? Okay, or would it, they do. It totally yeah, it stuff? looks kind of awkward. Um, which is why I changed it. They get kind of just like pushed out of the way. Um, all right, well, we'll just try it this way. So if it is a wall, then what we're going to do is just. Um, we'll 
we're just going to have them. Uh, we'll set them to be at the location of the strawberry. Because that's guaranteed to be inside. All right. Throw, 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 throw. There you go. Call him back. And OK, that seems like it works fine. So. It's good. OK, uh, nifty. OK, cool. Um, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and collapse that. And we're now going to um, I guess talk about what to do next. So um, so far we have one task done, right? Which is the ability for these bugs to pick up things and carry them. Um, so we have um, a few other types of tasks that I was kind of envisioning for this game. Let's actually open up the tile map because I put in I put them in the tile map editor. Let's do that. Um, this All spokes right. thing is not turning out well, so I'm going to try uh, just copying over the Bresnam circle and messing with that directly. Mm -hmm. One other thing you could do, Joey, which it would be, would have been my backup plan, is um, just take uh, an image of a circle and just draw it going around. You get what I'm saying? So if, then you could have thick things. I think that's probably what this is going to end up look, being basic. I mean, I'm taking the exact Bresenham circle implementation. I'm just going to try and cut out random, uh, not random, uh, subsections of it. OK, but you want it, you want it to like rotate too, right? Mm. I will play with it. OK. And if your computer is dying, you can stop. Um, all right, so so far we've done this treasure thing. Um, the other types of things we want to do is, um, well, the one I, I want to do probably first is this G, which will be a pile of gold. So this was something that was introduced, I want to say, in Pikmin 3, where you can have piles of resources, right? So like they have a bunch of... Um, uh, Oh, also high uniquest, um, where like a pile of a bunch of gold like rocks and you can throw them and each each Pikmin will pick up one of them, run it back to home, then run back over to the pile and pick up another one and just keep doing this over and over again. So they just do one at a time and they just kind of carry these things over. So it takes longer than carrying, um, but they a Pikmin will just automatically complete it. So once you throw one onto it, it'll pathfind to home and then it'll pathfind back to the thing and just keep doing this one by one until the entire pile is gone. Mm -hmm. The other kind of crucial part of this is um, when they are all gone, the Pikmin will all return to home base. So it's nice because you can throw them on this task, go and do other stuff, and then come back to home base and pick them up when they're done. You know? Okay, Thomas also just messaged me in chat, said I tried looking into it and couldn't even find the draw circle block. That's because that block is actually not in the image category. It's in Joey's arcade sprite utils. Oh, yeah, well, that was going to be my guess, but. Yeah, two parts of that. It's in there, uh, and then it's in image.ts in uh, PC lib is the core actual implementation. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and do one of these golden piles. Um, we're going to uh, just replace our treasure for now and do it here. And um, how are we going to draw this, I think, is the question. Mm. So like one of the nice things about Pikmin is you can see the pile getting smaller, you know? Mm -hmm. So we could draw it as like, let me just open up an image. Could do something like this maybe? Uh, 
like just this repeating. And every time you get one, you know, one of these disappears. It doesn't really look like a pile at all, but it gets the point across and I think it's reasonably compact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what we could do? We could fake it a little bit. So what we could do is um, we'll do this, but we'll do it in a pile shape. So let's actually um, do here. I'm going to erase. These move this over. And um, we will have it like this, but um, every time we'll just calculate a percentage and we'll just get rid of one of these every time. Um, you know, the percentage checks down, so it'll be out of um, we have seven here, so we'll do it out of seven and then just kind of get it down from there. I wish this looked more like a pile and maybe I can make that change later, but for now this will be fine. And uh, we need a color that stands out, so let's try using this red. And I, I don't really know what this represents, but it'll work. Berries, small and strawberries, grapes. Yeah, yeah, berries. Pile of grapes. Oh, I like pile of grapes actually. Let me um. Is it a raspberry? Hmm. It is raspberry. Is that better? I mean, I, oh, I like raspberry, yeah, so uh, I was cool with it. A bunch of grapes. I got you. I got you. That's awful. Get rid of that. Like, how do I make a, this? It's not a bushel. What is it? It's like a cluster. Yeah, how do we make this look kind of like grapes? Because uh, I like the idea that it's grapes. Um, so I feel like grapes, the classic shape is like, you know, a triangle. Yeah. Uh, but we kind of don't have the pixels for that. Um, so we could redesign our little thing. Um, here, let's uh, set this guy aside and try and do some grapes. Here, we'll use this dark purple. Might make sense to start with the stalk. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I want to draw it going in between the berries, you know? Mm, OK. So I think what we'll do is like that. And I don't know, that's the right shape, but this looks pretty not good. We'll just continue it down to the lower, lower left a little bit. Be good to go. Yeah, here, I'll adjust it in a sec. OK. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's kind of I can see it. Looks like grapes to me. Uh, OK, maybe we should try and do the. Stem a little bit and so like you get one like thing in the middle, right? And then it. Just yeah. kind of spreads out from there, but let's just, just branches off. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna actually try and draw it like branching. We're just gonna fill in with green and see how that looks. Okay, I had uh it's bad. I was I was drawing on here. I made a really cool diamond, but I think I'm on my, I'm progressing. All right. Uh, not a diamond, like a star actually by accident. 
Um, you know, we'll just go with this for now. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, copy this. We're going to go into the animation editor. Um, and we're going to probably redraw this later, but for now, um, we're going to just uh, eliminate these one at a time. And then this one will just be transparent. All right. Look at our wonderful animation. Da, 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 da. And you might be like, why are you using an animation? Well, um, this just turns into an array of images, uh, which is what we want. So we're going to go ahead and use this as an array of images. And this will be great frames. And we'll set this right here. All right. So um, let's go ahead and try and um, do this in our on tile map loaded. Inside of our on tile map loaded, we're going to go ahead and create our sprite because that's where we're creating our strawberries right now. Um, so we're going to do for element value of and do the G locations. G was gold and it's now grapes. Um, we're going to, yep, we're going to um, create a new sprite kind here, which is going to be grapes. And we're going to just go ahead and grab that grape frame, um, the first one. So arrays, get value at. Grape frames. Oh, like that. And uh, oh, it's unhappy with me. Um, am I calling tile map loaded before I did that? Did the frames? Yep. Put that up the top. There we go. Oh, that looks so awful. That looks so bad. All right. Sorry, guys. It's I got to go. Yourself. I, I believe it is. I believe it's grapes. I have to change it. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, we're going to go back to the um, bigger grape design. Um, and just, you know, we're going to try and make it work. I think we're going to go for like a splitting between different shapes. So we'll make this interior one small like that. Do the same thing for these. That. You know, there's just too much space in between them. We got to got to bunch them up. It's hard to do with one color. But I think it'll ultimately look better. So here, we'll move them together kind of like this. This is awful. Jeez, Joey, tell me how you really feel. How many parameters do I need for this thing? 
I got the I got the marching ants. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I need like three extra. This already has like ten parameters. Jesus. What for? You're putting in. You, you just need something that looks nice. Okay. Uh, I'm doing draw circle n to at cx cx cy cy radius r color color dash length dash length. Uh, I'm gonna have to do like a clear length clear length and then offset. Like how, like, because you want it to rotate around. Yeah. Okay. I think you can cut out. Give me offset, and then you take the dash length, clear length, just make them the same, and choose a value that looks nice to you. It depends on it depends on the the, the, the how big the circle is. It's it's fine because it's gonna it grows pretty fast. So. Okay. I'm I'm Joey's distraught and I'm making it that way. Just add as many parameters as you want, Joey. Yeah, do sorry. Joey tells you. Whatever do whatever's easiest for you. I shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. No, it's just bad. Ugh, ugh. I hate it all. I hate it. I don't want to be here anymore. I'm going to leave the call, Thomas. You're in charge of stream now. Oh, all right. Um, how do you feel about cat stream? I'm just, just point the camera at my cat for the next you know, I think five minutes. Might be crazy. I think people would like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard cats are popular on the internet. That's true. This is, no, this is. Not good. OK, here we're just going to go with this thick grape design. And we're going to fill it in with green. And then I'm just going to cry. A lot. Internally. I think what you really need is just one green stem that goes down the middle and then just side stems that go up to the side grapes. It's, so this is fine too. This is fine too. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think the issue here is that if I want to do this right, I have to use shading so that I can have them overlap in each other. Um, and I haven't been using shading for anything else, which is why I was trying to avoid it. Yeah. But um, I don't think there's any way of getting around it, really. So if I were to do that, I would use this color instead. And then just kind of shade them like that. And then here, I'll just give this a shot real quick. Because with this, they're actually kind of like defined from each other, so I can like start doing something more like this, except this is much too regular. So here, let's start with a bigger base grape um, so that it's not quite so geometric. We're going to um, make it circular, so like that. Go ahead, do that, and yeah, we'll shade it like that. Um, so then that looks nice. Do another one. And instead of just having it like all the way over, we do like that instead. This is turning into some sort of eldritch horror. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a way for me to copy and paste my way through this. I'm going to have to draw them all individually. All right, yeah, here's where we give up. Way. So we're just yeah. going to we're just going to do um, the we'll we'll do these nice round grapes, and we're just going to draw a bunch of them in like a circle. I want to do like actually nice looking grapes. We will I will do them off stream because I don't want to subject you all to that. Watching me draw for three hours. There you go. It's got a pile of grapes. Berries of some kind. That. All right. Um, that is a cool diamond. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this a few times. And then, um, oh, I guess we're out of time. So instead, I'm just going to take Joey's side mission. Uh, don't don't import it. I didn't test it at all. But just you can just open it and show. It's not it's not marching ants. It's like uh, I didn't get Literally the works. I didn't conceptualize it correctly. But oh, I see. It's like it, it's because it's it draws it by by quarter by like quarter. So I need to uh, renegotiate which order things are drawn. But that's where I'm getting it from. Gotcha. Well, that works. It still looks nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it for us today. Um, we are going to be back on Wednesday, and um, we will uh, be working on this game some more. I'll go ahead and put Joey's stuff into the game, and um, hopefully we're going to make some progress on these grapes instead of just endlessly fretting over the art. Maybe I'll draw them before stream starts. Um, I'm Richard. I'm Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at Jay Wonderl on the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And we will see you then. Bye. Bye.